This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2016 Scion IM. Up front is a 1.8 liter inline four, and down below is a six speed manual transmission. If you'd like to read more of my thoughts, head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive. We're we'll writing a complete article about the Scion IM. But let's get back to that 1.8 liter inline four. Well, it doesn't pack the biggest of punch, and a lot of people will say that this should have come with a turbo option. And while I don't disagree, it's also perfectly fine the way it is. It's a peppy little 1.8 liter, but really the game changer comes with the manual transmission. Like I said, it is a six speed manual transmission. The shift throw is super light. It's super easy to shift. And overall, if you've never driven stick shift, this would be a great car to learn on. I mean, really a really great car to learn on. It is so easy to get in and out of gear. You, it takes barely any gas to really get it going, and I really like that. And last but not least, the IM is front wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two gauges. On my left is a tachometer with a coolant gauge in it, and then on the right is a speedometer with a fuel gauge in it. I really like these actual gauges, and then in the middle, I do get some screens. That'll show me a couple different things, like my range, my odometer, stuff like that. On the steering wheel, I get my controls on the right for that center screen in the gauge cluster. And then on the left, I have my audio controls, stuff like that. To the left, all I have is my power mirror switches and then my window switches. Nothing really too crazy there. In the center, I do get two vents, which I really like, and a digital clock, which is super easy to read. I really like the positioning of it. I think it looks sleek and I think it looks proper. Then down below that, you get your radio. Now the radio is pretty basic. There's no Apple CarPlay or anything like that, but this is the base model I am, so I guess that's not really surprising. Down below the radio, you get your climate control options then you get a nice little cubby hole that has an aux and a USB input as well as a 12 volt 120 watt outlet then you get the shifter and I really like the shifter the shifter does not take up any more room than it absolutely needs to and I really like that it's clean it's concise and it looks good I think it's a really nice shifter it's tall to get into reverse you pull up and then it's over where first gear would be and I think overall it is a really good shifter and then down below that you do get the traction control off button as well as two dead switches you guys know I absolutely hate dead switches but this is the base model so take what you will then two cup holders and the handbrake the seats are all right they're a little rental car -y. they're a little stiff but like I keep saying this is the base model I can't strike it too hard for having uncomfortable seats they do their job. I'm not like uncomfortable, uncomfortable. They're just not as plush as I'd like them to be, but that's okay. Now, this is a four door, really five door. So we will do a backseat review. All right, so we are in the back of the IM. Really nothing to report here besides the fact that actually it does have really good headroom and that is because it is a hatchback. Smaller cars like say the IA or the Corolla sometimes do suffer from headroom. I'm about 5'10", 5'11". No issues with headroom at all. I do get a center console, just two cup holders. That's it. I do have cup holders in the doors as well, which it's very clear this is a Toyota product because they put a label that says water bottles only, no open cups. No open cups. Two seat back pockets, actually a considerable amount of knee room for a compact. Again, normally compacts do struggle with the back seat, but honestly, this isn't bad. The seats are a little hard, little rental car e, but like I keep saying, base model, I can't knock it too hard for that. Overall, this isn't a bad back seat. Again, if I needed a car that was cheap, reliable, get my friends around, go to college, this is it. I, I really can't think of a better car. We have to get to the looks. I absolutely love the looks of the IM. I think this car looks fabulous, especially in this blue color. It's a really cool blue color and the hatchback. It looks pretty modern. I know it's a 2016, but it looks pretty modern. It's angular, it's aggressive, and honestly, it's to the point where I wish it had a turbo just because of the looks. I think this thing looks so sleek and quick, and it doesn't quite have that bite 
to back it up. And so now we have to talk about not quite the elephant in the room, but this is the last year of the IM. 2016 was the last year that Scion was around and that Scion made this car. So this is the last IM made. And that's sad to me because Scion was a really, really cool company. I mentioned it in my other Scion review of a TC. I used to go to the Chicago Auto Show all the time as a kid. It was one of my favorite things ever. And Scion always had an absolutely amazing exhibit. They had Scions with sinks in them and huge speakers and it was like a manufacturer pimped their own rides. And as a kid, there's nothing more exciting than seeing an average everyday car that your parents own pimped out with speakers and subwoofers and a kitchen sink and refrigerators. There's nothing cooler than that. And Scion always appealed to younger kids, to people like me. But there's an issue with that is that I loved that stuff when I was 10 years old, when I had about $22 to my name. And while some things haven't changed, I might still only have $22. Scion just couldn't market to that younger generation. Actually, the people who ended up buying Scions the most were elderly because the XBs were so easy to get in and out of and it made them feel cool. So then the kids, well, they don't want what their grandma has. That's why no young person really wants a Buick or Oldsmobile. All right, excluding the Grand National but it really came down to a marketing flaw because this is a fun car. This is in stick shift. If I needed a car to get to college, this would be very high on my list because it has Toyota reliability. It's fun, it's cheap. This one right now has 10,000 miles and the Toyota dealer does not want that much money for it. This would be a great first car. No, 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 scratch that. This would be an amazing first car. And so this is a goodbye. This is a goodbye to Scion. This is a goodbye to the IM. This is a goodbye to cool, fun, little, cheap hatchbacks. Except that's not the case because the IM turned into the Corolla IM and now we have the Corolla hatchback that you can still get in manual. So while Scion might be gone, Toyota still carries on the legacy of the IM, the idea of the IM, the spirit of the IM in the Corolla hatchback. And that's pretty freaking sweet. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something about the 2016 Scion IM. I wanna give a huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville. You guys know they're absolutely awesome. They've been helping me get these reviews and I saw the Scion on their lot. I thought it looked cool. I thought it looked amazing and I knew I had to drive it. So thank you so much to Toyota of Naperville. Their information is up on the screen, but hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. I, 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 I